So if you've been working with Redux for so many years now, and you always felt like there is something wrong with Redux, and there's some like bad practices, and you need to write a lot of boilerplate code to do small teeny tiny stuff. Well, maybe it's actually the time to move to a new shiny, awesome state management library that is called Zustand. So in this video, we will see the differences between Zustand and React and why maybe you should consider moving from React, Redux and Redux Toolkit into using this really awesome, pretty simple library, which called Zustand. So if you're not familiar with Zustand already, Zustand is basically a state management library for React that does things right in the simplest way possible. So Zustand is actually an open source library. It's hosted on GitHub and it's actually created by that guy, which I'm not sure how to spell your name or sorry for them not spelling your name correctly. He has almost like 18 Ks of stars and it's super, super easy to get started with Zustand. So in fact, Zustand has been like, when, when it got released, it got so much hype, so much People were like, we're talking about that and switching from Redux and all of those. So in this particular video, we will actually go through the details of, oh, do you really want to like move from Redux or Redux 2K into using Zustand? Is it really worth it? And how simple it is to get started with it for like actual beginners. So we're gonna compare in both with like the actual Redux, the Redux core we are all familiar with, and the actual Redux toolkit, which basically is like a wrapper around the Redux core, but it's actually the batteries included tool set that makes it a lot easier to deal with Redux like compared to the actual Redux score, which you need a lot of boilerplate code, a lot of stuff to configure and so on and so forth. So I created this fake gem in here just to demonstrate what are the like good points and the bad point between both like Redux and Redux Toolkit versus Zustin. So this is just my own opinion. So I wrote this myself, what I've seen because I worked with Redux and Redux Toolkit on like production ready applications. And also I worked with Zustin on production ready applications and actually you saw completely different kind of mindset shifts between using like after using actual Zustan and before I was using Redux and Toolkit. And I was like, oh, that is that is like so much, much better than using the actual Redux. So I wrote those in here. Uh, those are like my own notes and why I think or how I think that like Zustan differs from Redux and Redux Toolkit and why you should use it in the first place. So I'm not saying like Redux is bad or Redux Toolkit is bad. I'm not saying Zustan is like the absolute beast of a state management library. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just giving a point of like what I've seen and like depending on my experience in here and what I've used. I absolutely love Redux and Redux still can. I still use it daily on my job. I still use Zustand. I both love them like separately and I have like deep, sincere, good feelings for both of them. So don't take me wrong. So from my perspective in here, what I've seen like Redux and Redux Toolkit, and it's particularly Redux talking about that side because Redux Toolkit, when it came, a lot of people like started using Redux Toolkit and, and among them, it was me. Uh, I started working with Redux Toolkit and it was like absolutely amazing to work with Redux Toolkit because it simplified a lot of stuff that were absolute painful before and, and like just completely disregarded those. So for example, in here we got like Redux, uh, like has too much boilerplate code and I absolutely agree with that because it literally just like you have to write more code than you actually need. For example, you want to just update a simple state and you're just doing it for a medium sized application and you have to write like 10 lines or 20 lines of code and import that and export that and yada, 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 just to be able to update a state, which is, which is not really like that good that you want to spend that much time just to do it in here where you can just simply do it. And there is like, for, for example, it's very complicated for beginners. And I find like Redux super, super complicated to understand it for beginners. I find a lot of beginners just asking me questions all the time about how to get started with Redux. I found it hard in this space. Why using these actions? Why using payloads? Yada, yada, yada. Um, like, as I said before, you have to write too much code to do a small UI changes. While, like, your small UI changes shouldn't require that much of code that needs to be written. And, uh, of course, Redux is only meant for medium to large size projects. And, of course, you can use different other, like, state management libraries or other diagrams or patterns like Flux, maybe, uh, which I absolutely agree on that. But I don't really, really like that Redux. It can be only used in medium to large size. And, of course, I absolutely, absolutely agree with that. But I don't necessarily like the idea of switching between different libraries. I want to learn something. I want to learn something really well. And when I use it everywhere, I would love to. And in the other hand, when I use or like, for example, when I switch from Redux and Redux toolkit, and I actually used Zustand in one of my projects, and it was a production ready project where I work, it 
it literally blew my mind the first time I took a, like a look on the documentation, started reading the documentation. And after like an hour, an hour and a half, maybe two hours, I actually started implementing Zoo Stand and didn't have much issues. And I found it super, super easy and like straight to the point. I also actually like find it so simplified to get started with advanced options like persist maybe, or maybe like async when, when you do like Redux, Thunk, async and all sorts of stuff. I found it super easy and already built in through like Zoo Stand stuff and Zoo Stand middleware which are already included you don't need to install like new libraries or new new npm packages and all that sort of stuff i also like found it like oh i only need to write the code needed to manage that particular state i don't need to write boilerplate code which made this like a hundred percent good experience for me because what i hated absolutely hated and disguised on like redux and redux toolkit particularly redux in that side is that like you need to write a lot of boilerplate code you need to manage a lot of imports a lot of actions a lot of payloads to be able to do a small teeny tiny stuff but in here you don't need to do that it's actually the pattern that or the api provided by zustand made things all clear and super and simple and throughout like simple hooks you can do so much stuff and if you take a look on a quick like example for sample store and how you put those things for example this is a sample store using like redox and particularly i'm using redox toolkit in here because it's actually a lot simpler compared to redox so i don't want to overcomplicate this because redox toolkit just can offer all of those so this is like the initialization of a reducer or it's called a slice and it's basically just a store right that's that's what it is like the terminology is a little bit different but what it does it's actually a store that holds a state and it allows you to like change the state and, and update the state and of course the component that listens for the state is going to be updated or re-rendered and that is it so this is basically what it is now for the redux toolkit in here or redux in general you need to like go like create a slice uh, which is like a reducer and you need to provide initial state in here which is which is fine but the thing is well for reducers you have to provide different stuff in here uh, the initial state is actually where the whole state is going to be like the the values that you need to manage is actually inside of the initial state and of course you can use inter interfaces in here for typescript but the thing in here for increments you have to you know you, it always going to give you the state and you can manage the state and this could be like a global store or you can create multiple stores in here which are like necessarily just like small slices in here and like last but only is to export the actual actions which is like increment by amount and everything you can just do dot actions and it's going to give you all the actions that are going to manipulate that and you need to make sure that you import the actual reducer because later on you need to use that particular reducer and put it on the global store to be able to use it of course you can use it that way but it's not going to be like completely because Redux is not going to be able to do all of those because you need to provide Redux with like or the Redux provider with an actual store that has all the reducers in order to be able to work. So here when it comes to using those it's not really that complicated when it compares to like the creation of the store, but it's still a little bit complicated. So you can do use selector, then use dispatch and the, the dispatch in here, you need to import your, your like actual, um, like, you know, actions in here, like decrement and increments, and you can call the dispatch and then pass it in increment and it can pass different values, which makes the syntax and the API a little bit more complicated. I, I absolutely understand why this one is complicated because it provides a lot of like, you know, like flexibility and you can do so much much stuff with it because it's advanced and everything I completely agree with this I like the way like how things should be working I'm not fine I'm fine with this but I'm not really fun of doing all of those in here so it's it's a bit like struggling to create all of those just to do small teeny tiny stuff and it's too much boilerplate code in my opinion now when it comes to zoo stand just just look at it of course just just focus on this one and you will see the actual beauty on zoo stand in here and why I love zoo stand so here for zoo stand a reducer or a store all you do just import a create which is the default export from zoo stand you do create and gonna give you a callback that has a set and another get function the set is basically just to update any kind of like variable inside of that store and of course you get like your variables in here which has the initial value by default you don't need to write too much boilerplate code and it has like an actions and and that is it just those actions are going to be called it's going to call the set you can update whatever you want and that is it it's pretty simple straight to the points and the action of course is going to give you the actual current state you can use the other get function or you can use it that way however you want still fine and it still works absolutely 
awesome. So this is it's going to return a hook. It's called use store. You can name it whatever. So this use store is actually a hook and you can use it inside of your components. So you can do use store, then you can do states, then state dot beers, or you can access whatever state you got. Maybe you want to like access the actual actions, you still do it the same way. Use store, then state, state increase population is going to give you the increased population in here. You can use this increased population, you can like, you know, bind it to the on click. And that is it straight to the point, super simple. And it doesn't introduce that much a complication, you don't need to wrap your component through like a provider then pass in the store and know, oh, this when it, it's going to re render and, and, and you worry about all those kind of like putting those nested stuff, any of that, none of these, it's just hooks, and it makes things look a lot simpler. And the code is so much easier to read compared to Redux. So I got two projects in here to showcase or demonstrate the difference between Redux and Redux toolkit versus zoo stand and what are like the major changes that you should take care about. And of course, like how it feels to have a project and migrate a project from Redux to zoo stand, and you know, all the all the stuff that you should, you know, keep an eye on. So as I said before, the application is super identical, it has like a cart in here, you can view you can go to different products, you can click the card is going to have, you know, different product that you click on, uh, you can add as many products as you want, you can go to like different categories, like shoes and stuff, you can add different sorts of shoes. And this is using API it works absolutely flawlessly, head over to the card, it works. And as said before, this using persist. So if you refresh or a fresh in here, it's always going to be persisted because it, it currently be, is being persisted on the session session storage, sorry. And that is the same thing for like the one that is running on uh, Redux or zoo stands worry. And here if I refresh again, yep, that's still actually working and everything is working with persist. So the first projects in here, it uses Redux and Redux toolkit. And of course, it actually uses Redux core. So I'm going to show you that both the differences between Redux toolkit and Redux core. And I'm going to like compare that later on to zoo stand. So first for Redux, all we know, or as we all know for that, as we've worked with Redux, it actually needs a store. So it needs to combine the stores in here into like, you know, or combines the reducers into like a single store, then you can just like put that store together, maybe you want to use persist. So you do persist reducer with another configuration. So too much boilerplate code, right? So each one in here, then you can do like a configure store with your in a middleware. And that middleware is like redux funk or like this one, it allows like async functions to be called throughout the store, which you need to provide through a middleware, which I don't really like that one. It's particularly the redux thing stuff. I don't really like that is not being opt-in into Redux and you have to use another library. But anyway, so this is, um, you know, you, you can configure all of those, then you can do a persist store, you can export that, then later on, inside of the index.js, you can do provider, you provide the store, then you can do the persist gate, which is gonna, you know, use re Redux persist to persist the state on the local storage, and you need to pass in the persister in here too much boilerplate code as usual for redux. And when it comes to the actual reducers, so if you head over to the products, we got two reducers, one for the products and the other one for the sidebar. And the products in here, you need to do like so much stuff as, as we've seen before. So initial state, then you can create the create slice and everything. And there is one thing I don't really like about Redux and particularly the Redux toolkit. And, and actually both Redux and Redux toolkit is actually for creating async functions and doing a fetch inside of like an like, like an async or like a store action in here, you basically need to use the create async thunk, which is imported from the Redux JS toolkit, which is like Redux thunk, it needs Redux thunk, and you need to create that function, you can use that function, and then you head over down to the extra reducers, then you can use the builder to add a case, then you can like, you know, check, oh, if the fetch product, if this promise is fulfilled, then you need or you can basically run this callback once it's fulfilled, which is going to mutate the state or basically change the state. And when it comes to actually consuming the state or like dispatching different actions, it's, it's pretty simple because it uses hooks and always using hooks is the simplest way possible in React. So you do use selector, you select whatever state you want and you can do dispatch and like whenever you got the dispatch and you can dispatch the fetch products and that is it and the state is going to update and you know the, the components is going to re-render and everything is going to be good now if we jump to the other projects which uses zoo stand in here now zoo stand as said before doesn't need like a global store you may create a global store it's super flexible you can do it however you want but it doesn't necessarily require you to have a global store then create maybe a provider or something as redox does so here i created a folder it's just like 
in, in my opinion here, having uh, it's not like said to use Zeus and to create like a stores folder. You can use it however you want. You can put those stores inside of like each component. You can you can utilize it however you want. And the stores in here got like product store, which as I said before, it needs just the create function in here. You can do so much stuff and the sidebar store in here. And if you head over to the index.js, we're just rendering our application because we don't need to pass in the provider or use the store to do that as the same way as we do Redux. Now, when it comes to the actual store, each store kind of like is completely dependent from the owner store, you can take those stores and combine them into a single store and create like a global store as Redux does. And you can have the same way or particularly you can use them separate as I'm doing in here because it's super simple to use them separate. And I don't need to like, you know, combine the concerns in here, there's some scenarios where you need to but in my case, I don't need to do that. So I can do like use product store, I can create now what I'm using is actually using the persist. So I'm doing Zeus 10 middleware, I'm using the persist. And this is how you tell Zeus 10 that I want to use persist for this particular store. So persist is just a function, it's going to give you set and gets which you can set the state or get the current state at any level you want, which makes it super simple. I absolutely love these two functions. And of course, you're going to return your actual store, which is just an object. So you can return your different state like products, loading, cart, single, whatever, you can do the fetch products. And this is where the part I talked about, like before, when we were here, for example, if we jump back to the create async thunk, you need to create all of those, then you jump in here, you can add a case and list in for the full field too much crap. Now if we jump back right over here, the fetch products or each function or each action inside of the store in Zeus stand can act on its own, it could be a promise, it could work as a asynchronous like function or method, which is absolutely amazing, you can call Axios in here. And you can immediately after awaiting that the response came back from the actual server, you can go ahead and update that using the set. Absolutely love that. I like when I found that is like doable in zoo stand compared to redux, like he blew my mind. And it was super simple. I thought like why redux didn't do that easy. I know there is some limitations in redux. And there are like points or like particular reasons why redux didn't do stuff the way it should be done just like you know, for either performance, security, whatever. But I enjoy it that way in zoo standing here, it's pretty, pretty simple. And of course, the same way you can go to like different methods in here and different stuff, no, not too much boilerplate code, only the functions that you need, and only those functions what they are doing, they are only doing what they need to do. They are not they're not basically overdoing stuff or doing complicated advanced stuff and adding boilerplate code, which is not necessary at all. And once you export the actual store in here, I exported that store as a default. Now I go back and I import the store and then the older component like the old products page in here. And I can use that as a hook. So use product store, they're gonna give me the state and I can extract whatever you want. And of course, those are like functions or methods, you can call those methods, you can use those state variables, you can manipulate them however you want. The components going to re render as intended. In fact, Zeus then has less bugs compared to redux. And I got another example where we're using redux core in here instead of like the redux toolkit. If you just take a quick look onto like redux core in here and how it works, that's absolutely horrible if you compare this to Zeus then. For this, you need to create a reducer, which is just a function that takes the state and you need to utilize a lot of stuff and this action in here that has a payload, then you can do a switch and each case in here. And what I don't really like that you have to define each type. And those types should be separate, they should be unique, which is very hard to keep them unique across a big application that you have to do like fetch products and you need to keep all of those as unique as possible and put them and export them then you you can reuse them in here, then you can check for all of those to update the state which you can return, which is fine for me, then you can update all states in here, you can do it that much. And also what you can do is actually the actions in here, which, of course, are going to be like returning objects of like a type, which is the current type like of the current action, and the payload of the action that you need to do that's going to be passed later on to the like reducer to get things done. I'm not a big fan of this, like why you have to do an action to do all of those kind of stuff, what you can simply do with the other way around with zoo standing here, I completely understand that redux has a completely different point in here. And it's more of like an advanced stuff or advanced state management, I can it's completely fine for like big, large scale projects. And it works with redux on so many projects, even though like, I'm still working with it, but I don't really like it when I like figured out redux toolkit, for example, or better the zoo stand stuff.